Warm greetings to all. I am Dr. Ilanka Lai from Department of Orthodontics and Dentofacial Orthopedics, Vinay Commission, Sankracharya Dental College. Today we are going to see about the topic on oral habits. First we are going to see about the various definitions of habits. The habit can be defined as a tendency towards an act that has become a repeated performance relatively fixed, consistent and easy to perform by an individual. There are various authors put forward this definition of habit. First, according to Dorland in 1957, habit can be defined as a fixed or the constant practice established by frequent repetition. According to William James, a new pathway of discharge formed in the brain by which certain incoming currents leads to escape. The last is the Finn, 1972, he put forward the most comfortable definition that is called as a socially unacceptable behavior is called as a habit. Next, we are going to see about the cla common classification of habits. By James William in 1923, he classified the habit as useful or harmful habits. By Klein in 1927, he classified as empty and meaningful habits. By Morris and Bogna, he cla they classified as pressure, non-pressure, biting habits. By Finn, he classified as a compulsive and non-compulsive habits. By Kingsley in 1956, he classified as a functional, muscular, combined muscular and postural habits. Next, the commonly oral habits, abnormal oral habits seen in the children are thumb and digit sucking, tongue thirsting, mouth breathing, bruxism and other binary habits such as lip biting and nail biting. First, we are going to see about the thumb and digit sucking. What is digit sucking? Is nothing but placement of thumb of one or more digits in varying depth into the mouth. Presence of this habit is quite normal till the age of 3 and of to 4 years. Etiology, there are numerous theories put forward for this thumb sucking habits. First is Freudian theory. It was given by uh, Sigmund and Freud. He suggested that child passes through various distinct phases of psychological development of which the oral or the anal phases are seen in first three years of life. In the oral phase, the mouth is believed to be an oroerotic zone. The child has always the tendency to place his fingers or any other object into the oral cavity. Prevention of such an act believed to result in emotional insecurity and this causes the risk of child diverging into the other habits. Next one is oral driven theory of Sears and Weiss. Sears and Wise in 1950 proposed this prolonged sucking can lead to this thumb sucking habit. Benjamin's theory, he what he suggested is thumb sucking arises from the rooting or the placing reflex seen in all the mammalian infants. What is rooting reflex is nothing but the movement of infant's head under the tongue towards an object touching his cheek. This object is usually the mother's breast but may also be a finger or pacifier. This rooting reflex disappears in normal individuals around 7 to 8 months of age. Prolonging of these habits can lead to this thumb sucking habit. What on all the physiological aspects of this habit is children are deprived of parental love, care and affection are believed to resort to this habit due to a feeling of insecurity. What is land pattern? According to some authors, thumb sucking is merely a learned pattern with no underlying cause of physiological bearing or the psychological bearing. What and all the other factors that could cause this thumb sucking habit? There are parents occupation, sometimes the mother will be in working, the number of siblings, social adjustment, stress may also lead to this thumb sucking habit. Moving on to the classification of thumb sucking habit, subtenly classification of thumb sucking includes four types, type A, type B, type C and type D. What is type A? Type A is nothing but placing the entire digit inside the mouth with a pad of thumb pressing against the palate. This thumb pin is in contact with both maxillary and mandibular anteriors. What is type B is inserted within the mouth almost up to the first joint and it rests against the palatal surface of maxillary anteriors. The thumb is in contact with both maxillary and mandibular anteriors and the type A will cause the mostly the constructed maxillary arch because the entire digit is placed against the palate. Next is moving on to the type C. What is type C is major part of the thumb is inserted within the mouth just beyond the first joint. It rests against the palatal surface of maxillary anteriors and the lower incisors do not touch the thumb. Whereas type D it is a very simple tongue thrust that is not thumb is not fully inserted into the mouth. The lower incisors makes contact with the approximate level of the thumb nail. Next is phases of development. How these habits are developed. 
phase 1 that is normal and subclinically significant that is first 2 years, 3 years, 2 to 3 years of a life it is considered as a normal habit. Phase 2 is clinically significant sucking that is between 3 to 6 end of years of age treatment to solve this dental problem should be initiated during this phase. Phase 3 is intractable sucking that is any thumb sucking persisting beyond this 4 to 5 years of life should be alert to the dentist to the underlying psychological aspects of the habit. Next is what and all the effects of this thumb sucking. The severity of this malocclusion as a result of thumb sucking depends on the three factors. One is duration, how the child is uh, having this habit, frequency, how frequent and then intensity of this thumb sucking habit. What and all the clinical features which are seen because of this thumb sucking habit are constricted maxilla, V-shaped narrow palate, labial flaring of the maxillary incisors, increased overjet, anterior open bite because of intrusion of upper and lower anteriors, short hypotonic incompetent upper lip, hyperactive lower lip with increased mentalis activity, retroclined mandibular incisors and lower tongue position. Next is diagnose. How you will clinically diagnose this patient? Once the patient enters into the clinical area, that questions regarding frequency, duration and intensity of the habit, enquiring about the feeding, habits, parental care and presence of the other habits. Intraoral examination should record all the features such as proclination, open bite, etc. And the child finger also should be examined. The presence of clean nails and callus on the finger is commonly associated with this thumb sucking habit. How we are going to manage this habits? First is, foremost is, a psychological approach that is parental care, love and affection. Our next is Dunlop beta hypothesis. What is this Dunlop beta hypothesis is that we should make the child to sit in front of a large mirror and ask the child to suck in thumb, to suck his or her thumb observing himself as he entered this habit. It is the best way to break the habit. Our next one is reminding aids that is thermoplastic thumb guards or banding of the elbow will also remind the child to withdraw this habit. Next is mechanical aids. This and all the removal or the fixed habit breakers are commonly used to break this habit. First picture we can show this is a flat crib thumb sucking appliance. Second one is vertical crib. Third one is vertical rack. Fourth one is blue rack appliance. Next is chemical approach. The most commonly used are pepper, quinine, asphotida which are commonly available in our home itself. Next moving on to the next habit is tongue thirsting habit. What is tongue thirsting is nothing but as a condition in which the tongue makes contact with any tooth anterior to the molar during swallowing. Usually seen in people with nasal obstruction. What on all the etiology for this tongue thirsting habit or improper bottle fielding, prolonged thumb sucking, genetic factors, neurological disturbances or the anatomic factors just such as macroglossia. Next is moving on to the classification of habits. According to James, it is classified as type 1, 2, 3. Type 1, it is non-deforming tongue thirst. Type 2, deforming anterior tongue thirst. It is further classified into 1, 2, 3. Subgroup 1 is anterior open bite, 2 is anterior proclination, 3 posterior cross bite. Next type 3 is deforming lateral tongue thirst. It is also further divided into subgroup 1, 2, 3. That is group 1 is consist of posterior open bite, group 2 will have posterior cross bite, group 3 will have deep over bite. And simple classification of this tongue thirst are simple or complex tongue thirst. The type 4 according to James is deforming anterior and lateral tongue thirst. It is also further classified into 1, 2, 3. 1 is uh, having anterior and posterior cross bite, group 2 will have the proclination of anterior teeth, group 3 will have the posterior cross bite. What are the clinical features of this tongue thirsting habit or proclined upper anteriors, anterior open bite, my maxillary protrusion, posterior open bite in case of lateral tongue thirst and posterior cross bite. Easily corrected malocclusion will be mostly the simple tongue thrust. The most commonly uh, correctable malocclusion which is caused by this simple tongue thrust. The complex tongue thrust it is very difficult to correct in orthodontics. Next moving on to the management that is habit breakers both fixed and removal crypts or the rigs and child is taught to correct the method of swallowing various muscle exercise also prevent this habits. Once the habit is intercepted the malocclusion associated with the tongue thrust is treated using either removal and fixed orthodontic appliance. Next moving on to mouth breathing habit it is usually seen with patients having nasal obstruction. 
What are all the classifications of mouth breathing habit? First is obstructive, habitual and anatomic. An obstructive what and all may be the cause for this mouth breathing habit or deviated nasal septum, nasal polyps, obstructive adenoids. Habitual who continues to breathe through his mouth even though the nasal obstruction is removed. Anatomic whose lip morphology does not permit complete closure of the mouth such as patients having short hypotonic upper lip. Next moving on to the pathophysiology of this mouth breathing habit or lowering the mandible, positioning the tongue downwards and forwards and tipping back of the head. What are all the clinical features you are commonly seen with mouth breathers? It is long narrow face that is nothing but leptoprosopic face, narrow nose and nasal passage, short flaccid upper lip, contracted that is constructed upper arch with possibility of posterior cross by blank face what is that is expressional less face and increased over jet anterior marginal gyvet is due to the dryness of the mouth because of this mouth breathing habit and anterior open bite and also patient will exhibit gummy smile next we are moving on to the diagnosis of mouth breathing habit first we should properly examine the patient's history with their parents and clinical examination there are four commonly used tests are mirror test, butterfly test, water holding test, lip seal test and also what is mirror test that is double sided mouth mirror should be placed below the nose and the upper part of the lip. If the fogging is present in the nose side that means the patient is breathing through the nose. If the fogging is present in the lip side that is mouth that is that means the patient is breathing through his uh, mouth. Next is cotton test that is nothing but butterfly shaped cotton will be placed below the nose. If the patient is able to breathe through the nose, the cotton will fall. Next is water holding test that is I ask the patient to hold the water for uh, one or two minutes. If the patient is able to hold the water inside the mouth, that means the patient is does not exhibit any habit. Next is lip seal test. Or not, next moving on to the uh, cephalometric diagnosis, it helps in establishing the amount of narrow pharyngeal space size of adenoids. It is a 2D dimension diagnosis aids and rhinomanometry it is a study of nasal airflow characteristic using devices consist of flow metrics and pressure gauge. Nowadays we are using the naso endoscopy for the three dimensional measurement of these airways. Next is management of mouth breathing habit that is removal of anatomical defect that is nasal or the pharyngeal obstruction, interception of the habit using vestibular or the oral screen and rapid maxillary expansion to expand the maxilla if the maxilla is constructed that will relieve the nasal obstruction. Next moving on to the uh, most commonly elder people will have this bruxism habit. It is can be defined as a grinding of the teeth for non-functional purposes. What more the etiology of this bruxism habit will be psychological and the emotional stress, occlusal interferences, pericoronitis and periodontal pain. Clinical features uh, most commonly the seen is occlusal wear facets can be observed on the teeth, fractures of the teeth and restoration, mobility of the teeth, tenderness and hypertrophy of the masseter muscles, masticatory muscles, muscle pain, uh, temporomandibular joint pain and discomfort can occur. What are the diagnosis for this bruxism habit? That is history and the clinical examination. Occlusal prematurities can be diagnosed by use of articulating pap papers. Electromyographic examination can be carried out to check the hyperactivity of the muscles of mastication. Treatment, psychological counseling, hypnosis, relaxing exercises and massage and night guard or the occlusal splints. Next moving on to the minor habits that is lip biting habits. Lip biting or the lip sucking sometimes appear after forced discontinuation of thumb or the finger sucking. This lip biting most often involves the lower lip that is turned inwards and pressure is exerted on the lingual surface of the maxillary anteriors. It is most commonly seen in class 2 division 1 malocclusion patients. This lip trap will be the common clinical sign that in that patients most commonly we will see this lip biting habits. And features that are proclined upper anteriors and retroclined lower anteriors, hypotrophic and redundant lower lip cracking of the lips and management is lip bumper. Nail biting. What is nail biting? It is a sign of internal tension. Clinical features will be the crowding due to the slippage of contact, uh, rotation, inflammation of the nail bud and alteration of incisal edge due to the wear of this incisal edge. Uh, management applying blood 
taste, nail polish or wearing of some mouth pieces, medications, antidepressants, psychotherapy will help in prevention of this nail biting habit. What and all the possible questions will be asked from this chapters and all, only the short notes will be coming from Department of Orthodontics that is thumb sucking habit, mouth breathing, classify tongue thirsting habit, add a note on its management, bruxism. The mouth breathing habit will be asked also as a long face syndrome or adenoid phasis. Thank you.